Hello, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to provide you with the overview of the Salvadores book structure in architecture, the building of buildings. So there are a total of uh, 15 chapters. So uh, this is the first video of the 15 sequence. And uh, this video is going to cover chapter one. So chapter one is structure in architecture. And the key ideas that are developed in this chapter are as follows. So structure is the external or internal armature that gives physical objects form and resistance to external forces. Structure may be human-made or natural. Built structures frequently imitate nature. Cooperation between architects and engineers is essential for successful structures. They complement each other. Multiple engineering disciplines are needed in a building project. Architecture evolved and changed with the development of building materials from stone and wood to steel, concrete, and composite materials. The advent of computers has simplified the design, complicated, uh, the, the design of complicated and daring forms. So let's dive a little deeper into this content. So what is structure? Basically, that's the uh, structure. Structure is something that the rest of the stuff is based on. So, for example, if we look at the human body, there is a structure of the skeleton, the, the bones, and then all the meat and muscles and organs and skin that is actually attached to that. So, uh, and when we look at the structures in nature, they are amazing. And uh, the first structures were not man-made, as you already know. So those were the honeycomb, the hexagons uh, created by the bees, or the beaver's dam, or the spider's web. So those are the... Uh, examples of the structures in nature, or if you look at the bird's nest, so they're all built without the intervention of the humans, and they are perfectly fine. So basically, um, every living thing from the smallest cell to the tallest tree has a structural form that is shaped in direct response to the for, uh, forces of its environment, such as gravity, water pressure, and wind. So uh, since uh, a lot of element, a, a lot of um, things are exposed to the elements, uh, they need to withstand that. And um, the way we design and construct the buildings kind of mimics what we see in nature. So the shape and proportions of a structural form are significantly a matter of scale. And we can observe different types of stru structure. For example, if you look at the uh, dandelion stalk or if you look at the large tree, so that are those are different proportions. So um, when uh, we um, talk about the behavior of human created structures, we need to always go back to the nature. So um, for example, when you see a tree branch, actually that is a cantilever that we use in the buildings. Or for example, or it's, um, uh, it, it can be thick or thin, it just needs to respond to the structural load that we want um, that to support. So, and, uh, for, and another example is the human hair. So that's um, an example of the material that can have a high degree of ductility. So it can be pulled and stretched before it breaks. So, and we see that in the materials as well. So what else is important to um, remember from this particular chapter? It's a, it's a short, it's a relatively short chapter, but uh, here we discussed that 
architects always work with uh, the team of engineers. So it's always a multidisciplinary collaboration when the architect designs the building and then it gets constructed. So, and there are different engineers, as you already know. So a uh, structural engineer is important. Civil engineer, mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers are important for the building. So when we uh, talk about the collaboration, what uh, is important to uh, remember? So just because it's like a logic puzzle, like the building, a lot of components are required there. So architects navigates all those multiple disciplines and actually helps uh, put the building together with the um, with, with the advice of the engineers. So please always remember that it's not a one person effort. Um, also, uh, structure is an essential component of architecture and it has always been so, but you don't have to um, know high math or just be able to uh, conduct some uh, really difficult mathematical computations to be able to understand the sense of constructability of the building. So sometimes uh, that is the common sense and sometimes you just uh, need to understand how wind, snow, rainstorms, earthquakes, and uh, fires had to be resisted. So in... Um, just because from the earliest times, a sense of beauty has been innate in humans. All constructions by civilized peoples were also conceived according to certain aesthetic tenets. So this would often impose on the structure far more stringent requirements than those of strength and economy. So please refer to the textbook. There are a lot of beautiful graphics and images. So that will definitely help you with this book. So uh, when um, we talk about architecture, so structure was always considered important. And some, in some cases, it actually dictated architecture. So uh, with uh, ma magnificent buildings have been created in the past and those that are created today with a notable disregard for the correctness of structure. So um, there is an example of the uh, Greek uh, Pantheon in Athens. So you can see that just because uh, such material as stone was used there, they had to really use short spans just because uh, of the um, material. So, and then when we look at the Gothic uh, cathedrals, uh, so for example, there is that Rowan Cathedral in Northern France, that's the expression of a correct structure. So stone is used to its best ability in compression with little or no tensile stresses being developed. So, uh, and it's been argued by some architectural historians as well by some structural engineers that a deep concern for structure will unavoidably lead to beauty. And this is how actually some engineers and architects or those who are trained uh, both in, as engineers and architects, this is how they expose the structure. For example, if you look at the buildings by um, such architects as Felix Candela or Santiago Calatrava, you will see how they celebrate the structure, how they expose that in the buildings. And they actually are not trying to hide it by other materials, by other finishes. This is how it is shown. Uh, for the most part, it's uh, steel and stone and concrete. So uh, I highly recommend you to just go uh, back to the textbook and check some other examples there. So, and um, there are not too many specialists like that because it is a difficult problem to solve, to have a supporting structure and have it 
exposed beautifully. So that uh, gives the aesthetic pleasure of the building as well as the functionality. So um, when we talk about the today's structural engineer, it's a specialist among other specialists. So uh, sometimes they have very narrow field of focus. So what they do is just, um, for example, like tensile structures or some other like um, roof specialists or like they really specialize in something and those specialists can be hired if uh, the project requires so. So, um, but it is obvious that once the basic principles of structural analysis have been established, it does not take a specialist to understand them on a purely physical basis. So uh, we all have some familiarity with structures in our daily lives, like we know uh, how to put the ladder, like at what angle to put it so it uh, doesn't slide on the floor and still will be able to carry our weight or we understand you know how thick the bookshelf is supposed to be to support the load so like those are really um, simple examples of us assessing the structures on a daily basis so um, the architect uh, always um, uh, need to consult with a structural engineer. So this is something important because there could be the most beautiful design, but if it's not feasible, if it's not constructible, and if it's not going to support the load, then the building is not going to work. And uh, now with the computers, we can actually calculate that. That can be done in advance. Uh, that is um, complementary to the drawings and specifications. So those models, uh, they can show the depiction of deformations or stress levels in the structure under load. So that can be done on the computer. And now uh, with the uh, like this uh, new form availability and the freedom of expression, we can uh, really build anything. But the most important question is, should it be build, built instead of can it be built? So that's something that we need to consider. And when we respond to the owner's requirements, we should always just uh, do the assessment. So uh, you can take a look at some other examples here in the book, such as uh, the Central China Television Headquarters Tower in Beijing. This is just the uh, gravity defined structure. And that was impossible to construct even a few decades ago. But now with the help of the computers, that was possible to calculate all the loads and just put it together. So um, what else is important to remember here in this chapter is basically this is um, this this book is not made to be extra difficult. So this is just the, uh, is going to help you prepare for the structural engineer courses or some other more advanced courses. So this is just like the brief overview of the structures in the world. Um, and we will review a few of them. Also, there are uh, different things like in the further chapters, we will review the materials, uh, then we'll review the structural forms and why buildings fail. So there is a lot of material and I truly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in chapter two. Thank you.